Hey guys, this is Brian over at Obedia, and we're going to talk today real quickly about setting up Personas' Studio Live remote software to control your Studio Live mixer. This is the Personas Studio Live 2442 uh, mixing console, and it's a obviously a huge uh, <laughs> mixing console. It's uh, got 24 channels and uh, all of the basic controls that you expect for channel control solo mute. Uh, each channel is equipped with a select button. Clicking on that select button allows me to toggle through the various settings that I have access to in the middle half of the surface here. Um, each channel has built-in gate, compressor, EQ settings and each one also has access to the various effects and auxiliary sends that are available for each of these channels. There's faders of course for each channel. There are built-in effects. There's a nice glowing LCD screen right here uh, that lets you choose from a number of built-in effects which can be applied to all of these channels. And of course on the back side uh, there are a number of available inputs and other controls um, that you've got access to. Uh, microphone ins, auxiliary sends, and various things like that. So this is obviously a very, very, very big console. This may not fit into your average home studio. There is a smaller version of the Studio Live if you are looking to get a lot of channels. But the very cool thing about this is that this is essentially an all-in-one package for being able to record uh, and mix a large amount of instruments um, in any uh, setting, whether it be studio or live. And that's something that I think is very cool about this. And the price of this is also really very affordable when you consider the size of it and what it is that you get um, with this control surface. Uh, this is a really cool feature that Personas has introduced uh, more recently with their Studio Live consoles that they have created um, that allows you to take control virtually of the console using software on the iPad. So you can step away from the console and actually mix from the iPad, which is very cool. And we're just going to talk real quickly about how to get that installed and up and running on your iPad. I'm using the iPad 2. Uh, you can use the iPad version 1 as well. There are no restrictions. However, you should make sure that you have the most up-to-date software. Um, I found that something that uh, was very integral was that I got the latest version of Universal Control from Personas' website and also I updated my iPad's uh, version of iOS and that helped with the connectivity. So, uh, when you have done that, you can get the SL Remote software from the App Store. So you can just launch the app App Store and you can then search for the software um, and so you'll what you can do is uh, just go right up here and I'm gonna search for Personas SL remote and this gives me the the SL remote software now it's going to show that I already have it installed obviously but uh, if you don't you can just load up the software and now you can take a look at it and then you can install it just by clicking on the install this is a free piece of software from Personas after you've installed that you're going to find that the software is going to be on your, I, on your uh, iPad's desktop and um, so now, figuring that you have a pretty basic uh, networking setup at home, which is to say that you probably have a wireless router, and that wireless router is what all of your computers connect to, that should be all that you need. Um, there are some more complex setups, and we can talk about those later. But most users are probably going to have a wireless router uh, and that wireless router is going to feed a wireless signal out to all the computers in your house, your studio, wherever else. All those computers connect to that wireless router and as long as you have your studio live console also plugged into uh, your host computer, 
you should be able to connect with the iPad to the Studio Live console. Uh, and this is all going to be done automatically. Uh, so in order to do that, we're just going to click on the SL Remote application. And so the Studio Live uh, Remote software opens up and we're going to see that as long as everything is working, the software should see the Studio Live console on my network. And we're going to see right here, it's seeing the console. And it gives me an IP address. I don't really need to be concerned with that, but it is showing me the IP address of the computer that the Studio Live console is connected to. So once I see that, as long as I'm seeing that, I can just kick, click the connect button. And now the console opens up. Now this is very cool because this console is actually controlling the Studio Live software that is also running on my PC. And you can even see right here, I have a mixer plugged into channel one of my Studio Live uh, console here in my studio and the software on the iPad is immediately picking up on it. So I can make changes to the input, I can mute channels, and I can also take over things like my master controls right here and I can bring my masters up. And you can kind of hear this if I talk into the mic here. Check, 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 one, two, 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 check, check. So you can see that's that's pretty cool because I am able now to virtually take over all of the uh, controls that I would normally be doing on my PC and I can do them from the iPad. Now there is something that I should make note of here as well and this is something that I think a lot of people are going to wonder about which is going to be can I use the SL remote software as transport control for a program such as Persona System Studio One Digital Audio Workstation or any other audio workstation that I am running on my computer? The answer is no, uh, you cannot do that. This is not transport control software. You're going to notice that uh, there's no playback features anywhere here. There's a lot of other features, but there are no playback features. So this is not going to act as a transport replacement. There are other applications that you can make use of on the iPad uh, as transport replacements, but the SL remote software is not going to do that. This is primarily for taking control of the mix on the hardware and also from the virtual software uh, that you can route your DAW into on your PC or your Mac and then do uh, the virtual mixing from there. Now I can also do things like open up the graphical EQ from here. I can also take a look at auxiliary mixers uh, and be able to change my aux sends and things like that. And uh, so this also gives me access to the EQs. I can make changes to my curves right here. And all of this is going to be reflected as well on my computer also running the uh, Studio Live console software. Now again, as I say, as long as you have a, a, a pretty basic networking setup at home, you should be just fine to make use of this as it is. Now there are a couple tweaks that said that you're going to want to do, uh, especially if you're going to be using this a lot in the studio or especially in a live situation. And let's take a look at those tweaks weeks that would just help you out. So now I am back in uh, the desktop mode of my iPad and I'm going to open up the settings. Now in the settings there's something that's very important to take a look at and that is under the general heading right here and I select general on the left hand side if it's not already selected and what I want to take a look at right now is auto lock and when I click on auto lock this is going to give me a number of different options 2 minutes, 5 minutes, 10, 15 or never. I'm going to go ahead and select never. Now the reason that I'm going to select never is that this is going to keep the iPad from turning itself off. Now typically the iPad is going to turn itself off because it wants to save the battery. That's a good feature, but if we're working live, we do not want this to be turning itself off in the middle of a session, especially if you happen to be mixing in a live situation. You definitely do not want that. So that is a very important tweak that, uh, that we need to do. 
Beyond that, we don't really need to tweak anything else in the actual uh, operational half of iOS with respect to making sure that everything runs. Now we can make some changes over here um, to the Studio Live remote. Here we can configure a few things about it. Uh, we can turn on or off the demo mixer right here. And what the demo mixer is, is just a demo uh, of the mixer that you can use uh, using SL Remote. And this is for if you happen to not be able to connect or if you didn't already own a Studio Live console, you could just check it out. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and disable that. Now you can also do things here like change the name of your network. I'm just going to leave mine at SL Remote. And then you also have a couple other things here. Enable Overview and Enable Auxiliary Mixers and Enable Peak Hold Meters. You probably just want to leave all of these on um, because you may end up making use of them later on as you are mixing. Beyond that, those are the primary settings that we need to do. And as long as we've got that set up, again, we can just launch the SL Remote software. We have immediate access now uh, to everything that we can take control of using uh, the Studio Live Remote software. And we can be able to make changes to all of these controls from the iPad. So uh, this is a very cool feature that uh, Personas has introduced, and if you do have, uh, if you happen to have an iPad and a Studio Live console, this is definitely something that uh, can be fun to make use of in the studio or in a live situation. I hope that this is useful to you guys. If there's anything else that I can answer or tell you about, please get in touch with me, Brian at Obedia.com or on Twitter at Twitter.com forward slash Obedia Tutor. And until next time, happy music making to you. Thank you.